Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Evil Overlord. It's a game for two to eight players. It takes about 10 to 30 minutes to play the game, and it's for two ages uh, for, for players two to eight, ages six and up. In the game Evil Overlord, you're going to be getting a deck of cards, and you're going to get a hand of cards from there, and you're then going to be doing a big, big, big like marketing slash trading phase in which you're going to try and collect all of a specific type of uh, type or suit, and then after you're done trading and put your hand face down wait for everybody else to finish and then deal out your army discard all the cards you don't need and fight each other the game is going to be taking place in a bunch of rounds and whoever wins the most rounds at the end is the winner let me go ahead and show you what it looks like and how it functions so here we have evil overlord and as you can see it comes with a box got some rules and it also has a big deck of cards a big stack of cards here in the deck you're going to be getting different factions you got yellow red and purple and blue, and you're going to simply take the deck and you're going to shuffle it. Now, I've already went ahead and shuffled it a little bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. I think you guys get the idea, though. And then depending on the number of players is how many cards you're going to deal out. It's two to eight players, so we'll go ahead and move these away. And each player is then going to get seven cards. So we'll go ahead and do a three-player game just so you have an idea of how it functions. Three, and four, and five, and six, and finally seven. Put the rest of the cards up here. They won't be needed for the round. Everybody's then going to look at their cards. Make sure not to show anybody else the cards in your hand. And we'll go ahead and put these just like that. And this player has got his cards. Ooh, look at all these cards here all the reds, and then of course this player has his cards. Now, there is then, after you look at these cards, you can go ahead and organize them however you would like. Generally, I would recommend organizing them by color so you can see how many points each card is worth. Uh, as you can see, this guy has a ton of these red cards here, so he's gonna try and get more red cards. And this player's got a good amount of blue cards, a couple red, a couple purple. And so he's going to organize them like that. Once your hands are pretty much organized, you're then going to go into the trading phase. And trading phase is pretty simple. People are just going to start asking for cards. Now, no one's going to know what's in anybody else's hand about their own, but they know that they want to collect cards of the same type. This is what a card looks like. It has the name of the card, has the suit, it has the power of the card, and a possible special ability on the bottom of the card. All of the cards range from about one to about nine power, and whoever has the most power based on their army at the end of the round is going to be the winner of the round, and the game will continue. But let's go ahead and go into the shopping phase. So this player's got one, two, three, four, five red, so he's gonna say, I'd like to trade two cards. He'll place two cards face down, and anybody here can go ahead and jump on it. Now this player wants to keep his blue, and this player wants to keep his purple so he can go ahead and trade any of these and he can go ahead and trade any of these however this guy will say i need to trade four cards and this guy will say i need to trade four cards and these guys might then choose to trade you can choose to trade any cards you want but you cannot specify what cards it is you're trading or what cards it is that you want after you've gone ahead and traded you can go ahead and rearrange your hands again make sure you got so he's got all his purple he still doesn't need these two here so he might say i want to trade two cards oh and you have two cards you want to trade so that might happen and that might get locked and of course at any point in time in the game you can choose to lock lock your hand. This guy has all red, so he's pretty happy with what he has. He'll go ahead and choose to lock his hand in, which means no more trades will come from him. But when you lock early, that means whenever you have a tie or a special ability that you can use, you're going to be the one who's going to go first or win that tie. Okay, so we're going to move on. Now, this player has two cards he doesn't want. This player has three. They might in some way try and say, okay, we'll go ahead and, go ahead and trade, trade two cards. So this guy will say, okay, I'll go ahead and trade you two. Maybe he'll give him one of each of these types. Or maybe he won't because all of these cards are really high. He doesn't want to give him any more points, even if he he doesn't know for a fact these are the cards he wants or doesn't want. So in this case, he might say, I'm actually just going to go ahead and lock in. I don't want to give you any more points. So he'll lock in his, and then he is going to be forced to lock in his hand after that. Once all the cards are locked in, your players are then going to go look through their hand and take all the cards out that do not match the set of their choice um, and put them aside. Some cards will actually require you to use the cards that you set aside, though. But in this case, I don't think that is going to be happening. Uh, so we go ahead and get rid of these. And then this player, of course, he has a full set of red. So when you do that, when he does that, he's going to put all these cards out, displaying them for everybody to see. Oh, wow, that's an amazing set there. And this guy will have his set out. And finally, this guy will have his set out. Now, the objective is to have the most points at the end of the round here. And the points are going to be determined by adding up all the numbers of power here. So he's got eight, nine, uh, 10, 13, 20 points here. And he's got 10 and seven, which is 17. So 20, 17. And this guy here, he's got 12, 13, 40, 50, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24 points. And you're going to go by power. So power is going to go first. Highest power first. So this elder vampire is going to say, destroy a random non-mech 
from a um, nominated army and added its power. So this is, these are mechs, so he can't do that. So he's going to choose this one. He'll randomize it. And these are all uh, sixes. So they're all going to get to go in order. Nobody else is higher than that with a special ability. So he'll go ahead and shuffle this. And this is going to be added. Bam. And then, of course, this one will actually do it as well. How evil. And one more time with this one here. This is an amazing army right here. Then, of course, he's going to get what's left over. He's down to four points now. Poor guy. And you're going to go to the next powerful card. Here's an eight. That just means that Silver Blades gets plus two versus bunny rabbits all of these guys get plus two versus but two bunny rabbits this one's for the skulls and this one's for the uh i guess little uh blinds here uh and then after that we'll keep going through um all the different so six five, any fives no um these that won't do anything any fours any threes twos ones and finally the zeros here and this one here says blight uh uh, for minus one for all monsters belonging to any army of your choice. He'll choose mechs, making each of these monsters go down one. So now the total amount of points is five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 17 points minus four, which puts it down to 13 points. This guy has four. And then this guy here is crazy. He's got six plus his four. It's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 28, uh, 29, uh, 30, 40, 40 points total. So he's going to end up winning this round by far. So this player is going to take his cards here and these are all going to count as a victory for him. Basically one victory point. So it says you just set the cards aside as a victory point. I would just choose to actually put one aside, put the rest into the graveyard, signifying the end of the round, which this player has completed one. And then you can go ahead and deal out seven more cards to each player and continue just like that. You can play with from two to eight players and the more players you play, the crazier it's going to get. And there's a ton of different abilities which we'll talk about above. So now for a couple caveats for Evil Overlord. As you can see that each of the different cards have different abilities depending on the type of card. Some of them are just very powerful, some of them are just very weak, and they may or may not have abilities. Let's go over a couple abilities, like the Dark Elf Tremptress here. This says it shields and ignores the first monster effect that would target this monster, and it's a nine. A lot of points there. You have a Dragon here. Cannot be killed by fire effects from a monster. You got a Dark Elf Assassin. It, cannot be, uh, it has to be excluded from any random effects. So like that one vampire we're talking about, how you shuffle them up and deal one randomly. This one be set aside you couldn't target her fortress cards so these guys don't have any power but you can still add them to your army and they do different things this one says two power per creature in your army to a maximum of 10 power really cool and this one of course is revolt another non-powered uh, card it says if you hold this and use uh this type of army in your uh, from your hand you're gonna lose the game very 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 dangerous card but there is a ton of different cards out there and they range uh different abilities and whatnot throughout the entire deck and there is a good amount of cards so let's talk about my review of the game first of all ton of different cards in the deck like i was saying the uh the artwork here is pretty cool i mean i i think it's like right there right in the there in the middle it's got some nice artwork here it's got some ones that are not as cool as others and um it does feel like you are an evil overlord trying to accumulate an army now the first thing i gotta say about this game is it's not a two-player game it might not even be a three-player game but from four and up, this game gets fun. The marketing phase is really, really enjoyable. When you're playing two players, it's just like, oh, you want to trade this? No. Uh, okay. Well, you want to trade this? No. Oh, okay. We'll play it. You know. Or maybe you'll just trade back and forth. It's just, it's just not as, as enjoyable. However, the more players you get into this, this is a definitely a party game. This is a game in which you're just trying to make the greatest army you possibly can, trading as best as you can. Oh, I don't want to trade with you because you seem like you're doing like you've got. You only need one card, and I need five cards. So I'm going to trade with Timmy instead, and that really works out well for you and adding cards like this revolt here which can make people lose automatically when they have this in their hand they'll have to try and trade this to get rid of it because if they don't they're in deep deep trouble and maybe they get stuck with it and they can't use that specific army because be like oh i'm not gonna trade with you anymore now you can't specify what cards are going into what players hands but you know for to, to a certain extent where cards are going and how they're going the more players are the more crazy and the less likely you're going to be remembering but the more fun the game gets if you like games that are party games that are for four or more players this is definitely a game i would suggest checking out it's quick and it's super simple it's super fun really easy to understand another really cool thing i like about this which is separate from the game but he's giving out a ton of copies of the game just for shipping i think it's like a dollar plus like seven dollars for shipping or something depending on what country you live in so you can get the game for practically nothing basically a free game to try out to go ahead and post on social media i suggest if this sounds a little interesting to you just go ahead and back that because it's definitely worth checking out and playing it's a great filler game simple just to play going through it throughout you know in between games and whatnot but like i said it's very very simple it's not gonna do not back this game in my opinion if it's for two or three players it's not going to be as enjoyable but if you got four players or more this i would highly suggest because it's a lot of fun it's got a lot of different choices and and like 
you want to say stuff, but you can't, which is that's what's really, really enjoyable about this game. Evil Overlord, a simple little strategy stash card game that involves an interesting trading marketing phase. Anyway, that is my review for the game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this game, go ahead and check it out on Kickstarter in the description below. Evil Overlord, the marketing trading evil, I guess like you're, you're creating your own armies, basically, but it feels like a marketing trading game, which is cool. There's not a lot of games I've seen like this, which is really interesting. Party game, four plus players, check it out. Also, go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Please subscribe to the content. It does help. We do greatly appreciate it. It makes us want to continue doing more and more videos. Also, go ahead and check out, um, check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They also do a ton of board game giveaways and blog posts as well. Great guys over there. I do strongly recommend them. Just great, uh, great, great, great people. All right, that's all I got for this time. And as always, guys, I look forward to marketing with you later.